Okay, so we just talked about demand curves, which are based on real things out in the world. Um, it's kind of the aggregate of everybody's individual preferences, everybody's indifference curves added up um, and kind of combined in a whole society creates demand. And you figure it out through surveys and through other statsy things that you can do to measure this. Um, supply curves are also real and based on actual things. Um, they're not based on preferences. These are based on the costs of creating things. Um, and there are all sorts of different costs inside a firm. And in the resources page for, um, for costs, um, there's a guide there um, that will show, uh, that will walk through an example of how to calculate all of these diff different types of costs using Excel and, and how to graph them and what these actually mean in real life. And so this is kind of a more a, a basic overview of these different types of costs. After this video, I would recommend going to the resources page and watching the Excel walkthrough um, so you can kind of see how this is applied in real life. Um, and then come back to, to the lectures and, and continue. Um, but I would recommend going to the resource page after this. So with costs, every firm, when you create stuff, it costs money to create stuff. You have to buy the inputs and then you have to pay people to change those inputs into outputs. And sometimes you have to pay money um, to advertise or to rent a space to be able to sell stuff. Um, it costs money to sell things. So there are all sorts of costs involved when you're selling stuff. Um, there are different types of costs. There are things called fixed costs, which are things that, that cost money regardless of how many things you produce. And so if you have a factory and you can make like one spoon or you can make 10 billion spoons, it's all going to happen in the same factory. Um, and you have to pay rent on that factory. You have to pay utilities. Those are all just fixed costs, things that you just have to do all the time, regardless of how many spoons or whatever product you're making. Um, and they're just kind of always there. You also have variable costs, which are things that cost money depending on how many things you make. So if you're producing spoons, for instance, you have to buy the metal that goes into the spoons. Um, and so the more spoons you make, the more metal you have to buy. Um, the more spoons you make, the more employees you have to pay um, and hire. And then the more benefits you have to pay for them and the more managers you have to um, hire to manage all of the increased employees. And so these are kind of the variable costs, um, costs that go up and down depending on how much stuff you're making. The total cost is just the, the sum of these two things. You take all the fixed costs and you take all the variable costs, add them together. That's the total cost of creating your stuff, creating pizza, creating ice cream, creating waffles, creating spoons, whatever you're creating. Um, there are variable costs, there are fixed costs, add them together, that's your total cost. The average cost is um, a fairly simple thing to calculate. You just take the total cost of creating stuff and divide it by the number of things you make. So if, um, if it costs you $100 to make 10 waffles, then the average cost is going to be $10 per waffle. Um, so you just take total cost divided by the number of things you make. Um, the marginal cost Hopefully you're getting more familiar with this marginal term. All marginal means is the cost of doing one more thing. So the marginal cost is the cost of creating one additional thing. Um, so it's, again, yeah, the cost to make one additional thing. It's also, if you can create a total cost formula, if you can figure out the actual equation for it, the marginal cost is going to be the slope or the derivative of that total cost. Um, and then you can graph it and you can do all sorts of things with it. So um, that's what we have cost-wise. You have a whole bunch of different costs inside a firm and the firm has to pay attention to all of these different things um, to make sure that they're not gonna go out of business, to make sure they're not going to um, make too much stuff and make it cost too much to, to actually create their stuff. And so if you're a manager, you have to care about this stuff. Um, you get an MBA and you focus on like supply chain management so that you can pay attention to costs like this. That's kind of why that field exists. Um, another thing a firm has to pay attention to is the prices that exist out in the world and their revenue. So there's a few different um, other terms that we have here. You have total revenue, which is basically the price of the thing that you're selling times how many things you're selling. Um, so if a waffle costs $5 because it's a gourmet fancy waffle and you sell 100 of them, 
then your total revenue is going to be five hundred dollars because it's a hundred dollars for or five dollars for a hundred waffles. There's five hundred dollars, um, and so that's your that's your revenue right there. Marginal revenue, if you can guess, means the additional revenue you get for selling one more waffle or one more spoon or one more whatever product you have. Um, and so that's going in this case of waffles here, um, where it's a five dollar waffle, and that's just kind of what it is all the time. Then the marginal revenue you get from one additional waffle is five dollars. The profit is different from revenue. Profit is um, it has to take into account the cost. You might be bringing in um, five dollars per waffle, but maybe it costs four dollars to create the waffle. Um, and your total cost per waffle or your marginal cost for waffles is like $4. Um, if that's the case, then your um, profit per waffle is going to be $1. And if you sell 100 waffles, then your profit's going to be $100. Um, the way you calculate profit is you just take the total revenue that you bring in and subtract the total cost. And whatever's left over is profit. Um, and so if you're a firm, Generally, firms are focused on maximizing their profit. They want to get the most profit possible. Um, and so to do that, you can either minimize costs, because if you can make total cost be really low, then that's not going to eat into your revenues. Or you can bump revenues up and either change the price. If you can change the price and make it really expensive, that's going to change the, the revenue you get in. Um, or if you can sell more stuff, then that will also bump up your revenues. So if you're trying to maximize profit, you want to have lots of revenues and very little costs. Um, and there's an actual formula for this. Um, and it is this. If you want to maximize profit, you need to find where your marginal revenue equals the marginal cost of creating the product. And if you can figure out where those two things are equal to each other, then that is their best place. That's the best point for maximizing profit. Um, a couple or one more point here. If you notice here, um, for profit, it uses the pi symbol here. That does not mean 3.14. That's just a different p. Um, we've already used the letter p for price in the, the different equations that we're working with. And so if we're talking about profits, we can't use p again um, because we're already using p for price. And so instead, we're using pi for profit because pi is just the Greek version of p. So when you see this in, in these different equations, it does not mean the circle base 3.1415 thing. It just means profit. So ignore, ignore the pi part of it. It's not actually pi, it's just profit. Um, so a couple final things here with this, this supply and demand idea is if you're a firm and you're creating stuff, there are other firms also creating stuff. And if you add up all of the different firms' costs, and add up all of the different marginal costs and combine them together, you create what is called the supply curve. So the whole market supply curve comes from all of the different firms creating waffles or spoons or calzones or whatever. And you're adding those up and that's what creates the upward sloping um, supply curve. It comes from a real thing. It's not made up utility numbers. It's actual firms costs all coming together into one equation. Um, and so that is what the market supply looks like. And the price that each of these firms face when they're selling their stuff and trying to maximize their revenue and maximize their profit um, comes from where the supply curve and the demand curve meet out in the world. And that is the price that they have to sell at. Um, and this can be bad if you're a firm. If you're an individual firm, you are what is called a price taker. And you cannot change the price on your own. We looked at this example before with the books where we said the, the general price for books out in the world is $8. Um, if you decide to sell your books for $12, um, when down the street somebody could get the same book for $8, you're not gonna sell a lot of books um, because people aren't willing to pay $12 for your book. They're gonna just walk down the street and get it for cheaper. Um, and so you would love to be able to sell it for $12. You'll get more money and that would boost your revenue, but you can't. You're kind of stuck with the prevailing price out in the world. Um, what this looks like um, is this here. Here's the demand curve, um, where in this situation there's 50 items that are being sold for a price of $10, and that's what exists out in the world. So you have to sell this for $10. Um, if it costs you like $20 to make whatever product this is, um, but you have to sell it for 10, 
that's not going to be good for you. Um, you're not going to be able to make any money and you're probably going to have to shut down. Um, if you can create this thing for like $2 and then sell it for 10, that's awesome for you. You're going to want to do that. And you're going to want to sell lots of things because that's the prevailing price. It's great for you. Um, so in the market, this is what we have. We have this supply curve. Um, this blue line here, again, comes from all of the different companies making stuff. And then you add up all of their different marginal costs and create this. Um, demand comes from everybody's different indifference curves that are um, aggregated. And this is kind of everybody's willingness to pay for something. Um, but for a firm, firms do not get um, this downward sloping demand curve. They are basically stuck with the price that exists in the world here. So this is the example. This is price taking. Um, a firm would love to be able to sell more um, for or sell up here, sell very few things um, for a lot of money, but they can't. They're stuck with this $10 price. And so that is what they're kind of stuck with here um, if you're in the price taking world here, which can be bad if you can't afford to sell the product at that price. And so the general rule, and you'll see this in problem sets here is if the price is lower than the average variable cost. So that means the variable cost of creating your stuff divided by the number of things you're making. If the prevailing price is lower than your variable costs, your average variable costs, then you're going to have to shut down because you're not going to be able to make money to make up for the cost of making this stuff. Um, and so you don't want that to happen. If the price is higher, then that's great. It doesn't cost as much to create the stuff and you're going to be able to make a profit. But if you ever start dropping, if the price ever goes down um, below your average variable costs, then you're not going to be able to make enough money um, to continue to operate. Um, and so that is why we care about these things. Um, from an MBA side, from business management, you're going to have people who pay attention to a firm's variable costs and fixed costs and pay attention to prevailing prices and average variable costs to make sure that um, the company doesn't have to shut down. That's what chief financial officers do. That's the finance side of this. Um, we don't care about that as much because we're MPAs and MPPs. Um, but it, it's good to know and it's good to know how the dynamics of these different firms work.